The Chicago Bears beat the Tennessee Titans last night by a score of 27-24 in Tennessee in the final preseason game of the year. What should we take away from this game? Watch this video to find out. What's going on guys? I'm back with the Chicago Bears post-game reaction videos which I'll be doing every single week during this year. So if you guys want more of those videos, be sure to subscribe to this channel. I'll be coming out with weekly content regarding the Bears every single week of the year. So be sure to subscribe if you want more of that. But in today's video guys, I'll be breaking down the game that we played last night. Against the Tennessee Titans, it's not going to be a very long video because there's not a whole lot to take away from a third preseason game because obviously a lot of starters were not playing in this game on both sides. Um, Ryan Tannehill was not playing their starting quarterback, our starting quarterback, Andy Dalton. He was not playing either. There's a bunch of starters on the defense and offense also that were not playing. So you can't take away a whole lot from a game like this. Like you have these guys are never going to do much in the NFL, so it doesn't really matter what they do in a game like this. But there are some pretty positive and some negative things to take away that could impact us in the regular season this year so starting with the first big positive uh, takeaway i had from this game was that our rookie quarterback justin fields man he made a big time throw at the end of that first half you guys remember it was 50 seconds left we got down the field pretty fast um up to that point though we didn't have really much going on offense at all so it was a struggle up until that point but fields got us down the field pretty fast um our receivers made some pretty good plays and we got to the tennessee titans i think it was a 20 yard line right and at that point okay it was first and 10 and we call a play uh the pocket starts to collapse a little bit okay both of our tackles got beat on the outside but they're speed rushers so fields is forced to step up escape the pressure run to the right okay and i didn't think that anybody was open on that play okay when i was looking at that play in real time i thought that he was probably just gonna throw the ball away but he somehow found jesper horsted open for like a split second where he didn't even seem that open guys like he pretty much just threw it to the side of the end zone where it was either gonna be a fantastic catch by jesper or just just an incompletion right because there's no way a db could actually make a play on that ball which that's exactly what i love to see okay give your receivers a chance to make those crazy catches and sometimes they are going to come down with them, and that's exactly what happened in this game, okay? Fields delivered that pass exactly where it had to be. Jesper made a great play for him as well, and it was a fantastic, fantastic play that resulted in our first offensive touchdown of the game, which, guys, again, I've been saying this pretty much since the day that we drafted Justin Fields. Justin Fields is the type of quarterback that can turn these broken plays into positive yardage. He can turn these broken plays where O-line can't hold up where your receiver is seemingly not open and he can turn those plays into touchdowns because of the innate abilities that he was either born with or he developed throughout his lifetime okay it's truly a special thing that a lot of quarterbacks in this league don't have okay when i saw that play again i saw flashes of russell wilson on that play i saw flashes of aaron Rodgers as well okay the ability to escape the pocket and seemingly throw a guy open where it seems like there's no you know pocket to actually make that pass but fields has done that so many times in college and he's doing that in the nfl now as well okay against nfl level talent obviously this game was against mostly backups but i'm confident he can do this in the real games against better defenders as well because that's the type of talent that this guy is okay and it's just it makes me so damn excited to be a fan of this team right now because i never felt this confident in my quarterback man like i swear to god i know he is only a prospect and there's nothing that he's proven yet in the nfl but i've never seen a bears quarterback prospect like justin fields which again begs the question like is matt Nagy making the right decision sitting him to start the season okay if you ask me i don't know about the decision okay because i really feel like justin fields gives us the best chance to win during week one because of plays like this okay if our offensive line is not elite if it's not good to start the season then you probably want a quarterback with more mobility that can make plays by himself that can make you look better as a play caller by turning these broken plays into positive yardage but i don't know what matt Nagy is thinking okay maybe he made a promise to andy dalton where he promised him the starting job for at least a few weeks which that's kind of a dumb thing to do in my opinion you should never like who cares about a promise you made to a guy that's not going to be here for long term okay you should start the best guy and in a lot of our opinions, that is Justin Fields. But either way, guys, I don't see Justin Fields sitting on the bench for that long this season because I simply don't see how Andy Dalton gives us a better chance of winning when we have a guy like this, okay, that's already doing crazy things at the age of 22. So obviously not like an insane overall game from Justin Fields because he only threw the ball, 
I believe, 10 times. Okay, Matt Nagy didn't even give him a chance to throw much in this game, which I found kind of odd, okay? Because you probably want to give this guy more opportunities to show how good he is, but I guess Matt Nagy wants to not show us everything just yet, okay? So Justin Fields was 7 for 10 in this game. He only passed for 54 yards, had one touchdown, zero interceptions, a passer rating of 116.3. So final numbers, obviously not insanely good, but he did what he could with the chances that he was given, okay? The O-line was pretty poor on a good portion of plays, you know, that, that he was in there, okay? Uh, Jermaine Fetty especially, which I'll talk about him a little bit later, he definitely did struggle in this game. So he had some O-line issues, he had some maybe play calling issues as well, but he still made the most out of whatever opportunities he had, which is pretty much all I wanted to see from him in this game. I would have liked to see more yardage, more touchdowns, more big plays, but you can only do so much with what you have, okay? He didn't have a crazy amount to work with in this game. So obviously I think just, again, Fields just flashes insane playmaking ability, and that's pretty much all I want to see from him in this game. So good day by Fields. I'm talking about the starting offensive line now, okay? So obviously in my previous video, I talked about how we would have our starting offensive line for a good portion of this game, which is exactly what happened, okay? Jermaine Fedi and Jason Peters, both of our tackles, they actually played for the first time this preseason, and they were in there for a good number of series in the first half. And the results were not all that great just yet, guys. Okay, our offensive line still has some issues. Uh, Jason Peters at the beginning struggled a little bit, but Peters actually got better as the game went on, which that's pretty impressive, guys. Okay, this guy is almost 39. He is 39 years old. He's almost 40 years old, and even at this age, he's still looking like a pretty decent option at left tackle. Okay, obviously, he was not elite by any means, but as the game went on, guys, he became more... I felt like reliable okay he was having less uh, pressures given up his feet got a little bit faster he seemed to be more in control of the game so overall not a bad performance at all by jason peters he could be a lot better um obviously as well but you know that's probably gonna come with time okay this guy was pretty much retired this offseason but he came out of retirement to play for our chicago bears so i like the signing of peters man he looked decent out there um jermaine fetty though on the right side not so good okay he got beat a bunch of times throughout that first half okay his feet looked slow his technique was a little bit off um he was getting beat by pure speed and it just seemed like he was not ready to play that game which to some extent i do understand because he just came off from being injured okay just like last week so he's barely played at all during training camp and during preseason but that's kind of worrying at this point okay because we played the los angeles rams in two weeks and they like he's gonna go up against most likely leonard floyd and floyd is gonna have his speed to his advantage and you know a slow footed guy right now in Jermaine Fetty that's kind of going to be a hindrance to our offense if he does not pick things up fast so I'm not officially hitting the panic button just yet on Jermaine Fetty but that was not a good first performance at all okay I think our entire offensive line did have some issues you know obviously it was not just Jermaine Fetty I must have had some bad moments too like I talked about Jason Peters at the beginning had some bad moments so our entire O-line could use a lot more practice a lot more time to gel moving forward but that's a problem right now guys like we don't have a lot of time before the season starts so that's something to pay attention to okay the condition of the bears o-line okay it's not giving me the most confidence at this point in time but moving on to a more happier topic now um jesper horsted guys okay this guy came out of nowhere and had pretty much the game of his life in a do or die situation for him personally okay because i felt like he was on the roster bubble before this game but after a performance like this where he had three touchdowns over 100 yards he had two insane catches one in the end zone and one where he was uh one-handing the ball right and just uh went into the end zone after that one-handed catch after a day like this i think you have to justify keeping him on this roster as that fourth tight end okay because last year we kept five tight ends on the roster this year i feel like we're probably going to keep four and honestly horstead could be that guy okay i think it's going to be cole combat number one it's going to be jimmy graham number two jesse james Number three has made a crazy amount of plays, so James is probably set at the number three spot. But then number four, I think, should go to Horsted, okay? He's made a crazy amount of plays now in training camp, but also now in the games as well, okay? To go off for over 100 yards, three touchdowns, and show off your abilities as a pass catcher in this pass-heavy league, in this pass-heavy offense, I mean, that's definitely something that's a valuable asset, okay, to this team, okay? He's just, he has the ability to jump up and get the ball wherever he is he can make those circus catches those one-handers um he's done that before in the regular season too with mitch trubisky at quarterback so jesper does offer you know a ton of potential for us as a pass catching tight end in this offense so i hope the bears are able to keep him 
Another guy on this offense that had a pretty good play, I mean, he didn't play much, but he had one pretty good play that I want to talk about, is Daz Newsome. Okay, we haven't seen a lot of Daz Newsome in uh, these games so far because he was coming off a shoulder or a collarbone injury where he broke his collarbone in OTAs. Um, so that was pretty unfortunate. He couldn't play much during training camp or the preseason games, but now he's getting a little bit healthier, and we saw that on the field yesterday, okay? You guys remember that screen pass, which... I think he took uh, 19 yards, put a nasty move on the initial tackler, which, you know, in years prior, that probably would have been stuffed for no gain, right? Like, we didn't have a lot of guys that could make you miss in space, but Daz Newsome is that guy, okay? If you give this guy the ball in space, even on the screen passes, he can take those potentially to the house because of his shiftiness, okay, as a, as a receiver. He doesn't have the most, you know, burning speed. He's not, like, the fastest guy in the world, but he does have enough speed, enough shiftiness to make guys miss and get that yak, okay, that yards after the catch that we've been missing on this offense the past few years in Chicago. So not really a lot from Daz Newsome. He only had one catch, but I thought that was a pretty good play that he had. And overall, I don't have much else to say about the offense. Um, obviously, Nick Foles came in that second half, and he played pretty good, honestly, okay? He had two touchdowns, um, pretty high passer rating. He was 10 for 13 for 142 yards. So Hey, if any team out there wants him, okay, if any team wants our third string quarterback, please call their line, okay? We'll accept anything. We'll accept a seventh rounder. We'll accept a sixth rounder. At this point, I feel like some team has to want him, okay? This guy played pretty good football out there, and hey, the Jets need to back up. Maybe the Colts need a starter if you want uh, to push Carson once again. I mean, <laughs> some team I really hope trades for this guy because we're, we're not going to get any value out of Nick Foles being on this team this year. He's obviously not going to challenge for the starting job, so... Having a highly paid guy like this as your third string quarterback is not the best thing for your team. So I sincerely hope that some team out, out there trades for Nick Foles. And this performance is definitely going to help. So overall, pretty good day by the offense, scoring 27 points. The beginning was not that good, but they got better as the game went on. Talking about the defense now, there were a handful of plays that our defense made that I do want to talk about. Okay, They did struggle at times, but they also had some pretty big time plays. They get some big time turnovers that they forced, which helped us win this game. Number one was that pick six by Trey Roberson, the guy from CFL, which is obviously a great play by him to be out there in coverage, catch that ball and make it go the other way. Good play by Roberson, but an even better play by Travis Gibson, Okay, because he caused the interception to actually happen. Okay, He came screaming off the edge, beat the guy beat the tackle he was going up against and just slammed into Logan Woodside which caused that awkward throw that resulted in that INT so overall just a phenomenal day by Travis Gibson okay this guy's in his second year on this defense and he could honestly challenge Robert Quinn for some starting snaps if Robert Quinn does not pick things up fast because Quinn hasn't looked that good so far in uh, in these games and a hungry young guy like Travis Gibson man you might want to give him a chance okay I'm just telling you so Great day by Gibson. Also a great day by Eddie Goldman. Okay, this guy was out there just stuffing the runs as he always does on the interior of that defense. He was playing at the beginning of this game and he had a bunch of plays in a row where he was just a, a you know a monster in the middle of that defense. Okay, pushing the pocket, uh, forcing run stops, and just doing Eddie Goldman like things. So it's great to see Eddie Goldman back out there at full strength. I mean, he seems like he's gonna be a monster again this season. He's been having a great training camp and preseason as well so great day by goldman danny trevathan also had an int which great play by him that was a horrible throw by the quarterback though so not really an insane play to make by trevathan but to actually get your hands on that ball good for danny okay there's been a lot of question marks about danny going into this season okay is he going to be replaced by a guy like alec ogletree or a younger guy because danny is getting up there in age now he's getting a little bit slower he's not the same guy he once was but these plays are definitely going to help his case to uh, continue to start on this team so love to see that uh, talking about some bad though now i feel like our cornerbacks did have their struggles sometimes in this game okay even going up against you know a backup quarterback okay thomas graham got beat in the end zone once duke shelley got beat on a number of occasions kindle wilder also had a play where he got burnt pretty badly so i feel like our secondary right now is still kind of it's up in the air okay what we're gonna be this year we do have the potential to be at least an average secondary with the guy like jalen johnson at cornerback number one eddie jackson free safety to sean gibson strong safety but the rest of our secondary does worry me at this point in time okay we don't have any other sure thing right now okay who's gonna be our starting second corner um i honestly have no idea it might be Artie burns it might be desmond trufant who's barely played so far it might be Kendo vildor i literally have no idea which is kind of scary given the fact that you know week one is only in two weeks so our secondary might be a work in progress this year it might not be 
the same secondary we're accustomed to seeing here in Chicago the last few years, which is you know a cause for concern. But if our D-line can be great, if our pass rushers can be great, that should help out our guys in the secondary a lot. So overall, not an amazing day by our defense, honestly, but they did have their moments at certain points in this game. But that's pretty much going to wrap up my video, guys. Let me know what you guys thought about this game in the comments down below. I'll be back. Uh, next week with probably more season prediction videos, maybe a season hype video as well, which I'll have either next week or the week after. But I'll have that out at some point in time. A lot more content coming to you guys in the next few weeks. If you guys have any ideas for videos, by the way, just leave them down below in the comments or message me on Instagram or Twitter or whatever, because I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about video ideas or what you want to see from this channel. It's going to be a very fun season. I cannot wait to cover this team for this year because I'm so excited about our quarterback and a lot of other stuff regarding the team for the first time since probably 2018, okay? So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave your comments down below, but as always, bear down. <laughs>